All right, so Marvin Ryder from the Duke School of Business at McMaster University. Last time we spoke just kind of at the uh, start of the pandemic, you predicted a V rebound with the real estate market. You were correct. So that's why I thought, hey, who better to talk to now? When as a realtor, I often get asked, how's the market? Is it going to maintain like this where there are multiple offers and everything is just so much competition, housing prices are going up so much. So you predicted it last time and I'll send it over to you again. <laughs> I'll get my crystal forward. ball out. But just before I look into my crystal ball and answer your question, let me, let me add that just last week, the Bank of Canada came out with its look into the future. And the Bank of Canada says that it believes a vaccine, an effective vaccine for COVID won't be available until as early as the summer of 2021. And in terms of getting enough people vaccinated to get herd immunity, probably won't happen until 2022. Given that, the Bank of Canada then said they don't anticipate moving their very, very low interest rates at all next year. And even in the first half of 2022, they don't think we're going to get back to sort of normal levels of interest rates or start to see them go up until the latter half of 2022 or even 2023. Now I'm saying all that to you because part of the uh, rocket fuel that has been driving the recovery in the housing market have been these very low interest rates. Um, so people looking to buy property, they're going to have a tremendous incentive. It's not like that is running out. Oh, I've only got another month and then all oh, the interest rates are gonna... No, you've got the luxury now of having probably another two years of mortgages in the 2% range. Historically in Canada, mortgages are in the 5% range. Those of us who are older can remember times when mortgages were higher, but typically 5%, 2%, 2.5% for mortgages, this is going to continue to add rocket fuel. The other thing that's we're not sure what's going to add rocket fuel, but it has so far, is uh, because of COVID, people are working from home. If you were in downtown Toronto, uh, Sean, you would probably not be a really happy person. First, you've got these tall office buildings in downtown Toronto, mostly sitting empty. Now, businesses at the moment are paying the rent for that space because they think they might return to work that way. But those people who were sent home, normally living outside the core of Toronto, have suddenly regained time in their life. Maybe an hour and a half in the morning, an hour and a half in the afternoon in terms of commute. They've suddenly found other things to do with their time. And they're saying, well, maybe I don't have to go into the office. So even if you want me to come back, I may not feel obliged to come back. Uh, if you're in the path in, in underneath all those tall buildings in downtown Toronto, it's a ghost town. You could fire a cannon and not hit anybody. So I, I'm a little worried about that. And then we're also quite worried about the condo market in Toronto. What was fueling that was also, along with the low interest rates, people choosing to live close enough that they could walk to work. Right. So I'll get that little box of air in the sky and I'll pay a premium for that, but at least I'm close to work. I don't have to have a car. Well, if I don't have to come there, hmm, let's see, I can buy a box of air for $500,000 in downtown Toronto that might be 600 square feet, or I can get myself a three bedroom house in, let's say, Beamsville and have money left over from my $500,000. So for the Hamilton Burlington area, that's the second source of rocket fuel, the low interest rates. And then people saying, I don't have to, I don't have to live in Toronto. I can take advantage and get the property. Now, granted, if we keep seeing prices going up the way they are, they won't be as much of a bargain in 2021 as they are in 2020 and not, not as much really as a bargain. Like most of the, the rural places around Hamilton now are listed for 800, they're selling for a million. Townhomes in Burlington are over a million. Homes downtown Hamilton in the North End are over 500,000 now. And it just keeps doing this. Right, so, but I think I think in terms of Hamilton, Burlington and the areas around it, the Beamsvilles, the, the Binbrooks of the world, I think people are still gonna be looking at that. And here's the question, whenever we get to the other side of COVID and will businesses say, come on back to the downtown and work in downtown, uh, will they? And then secondly, if they say come back, will people want to go back? Very or will true. people say, look, you, you've had me working for two years from home and you haven't had a problem with my work. Why should I come back? There are companies that I'm worried about. So again, I'm worried about those tall office towers. I'm worried about the condo market. We could actually see condo prices drop in downtown Toronto by 
20, 25%. And I don't know what that's going to do because many people who, who dabble in the condo market aren't actually planning to live in the properties they buy. They buy them and then plan to, to flip them. Well, what if it starts going in the wrong direction? You can't flip them and make any money. You're stuck with them. What are you going to do? So I'm not, I'm not quite certain what that means in Toronto. But if we're talking about the outside Toronto market, the, the greater Hamilton area, uh, I think it's still going to go gangbusters and will for probably two more years for sure. So two years. So get in the market and ride the wave, I guess, for now. <laughs> yeah. Or if you, if you said, well, it's crazy at the moment. I don't want to get in the water. I want it to calm down. I don't know when it's going to get calm. So I, I think if you want to get in the market, get in the market. And uh, I would also advise people, and this probably you don't want to hear, but if, if there's a, a property that you want to buy and you think $600,000 is the right price, you put in what you think is the right price and don't get into a bidding war. Uh, a property that you think is worth 600000 is not worth 800000 and And don't get into it. It's a bit like an auction sale. Sometimes people get caught up in an auction and they want to win the auction, but then they overpay. Uh, I'd like to think people will be calmer about that and, and don't, don't feel... You have to overpay. Why? Because there'll always be other houses coming on the market. There, we call that churn. And there's always a certain amount of houses that come and go and come and go. So you don't get this one. There'll be another one tomorrow. And, right. and that's what keeps keeps you know your business uh, busy. Well, good stuff. Well, thank you for the crystal ball. I'll probably check in with you maybe in a couple of months. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll see. Uh, we don't know. Of course, one of the other wild cards as we're talking are the results of the American election. Since I'm expecting a decisive victory for somebody, I'm not expecting the markets to go into any more panic. And also, you know, if something magically happened with COVID, um, as Mr. Trump has often said, we're rounding the corner. You know, if a vaccine were suddenly to spring up in the next month and could become broadly available, or if it just somehow disappeared the way that SARS did almost 20 years ago, well, then things again might change. But for the moment, I think we have to settle in and live with, with COVID. And, and therefore, I don't think anything's going to change in the immediate future. Good stuff. Thank you, Marvin. My pleasure.